I wanted to pivot into something. And if anybody has had an opportunity to watch um, our segment on the rare and antiquarian books, I think it's nice every now and again to uh, expose folks to things that are maybe overlooked in their lives, their circumstances, uh, but yet actually hold a lot of value. And most of the time, it's completely unrealized value, mm -hmm. mainly because people don't uh, know what they've got. They don't know what they have. They haven't taken the time to say, let me look at my book collection and see if there isn't anything interesting in it. So in the rare and antiquarian uh, book section, I kind of talk just generally about some finds that are out there. And if you take the time to, to look around, you can discover you may be holding things that are uh, shockingly valuable but in a way. But we're not talking about books. I know, but that's we're a nice segue. <laughs> Thank you. Wind up, wind up, wind up, wind up. Pitch! <laughs> it's a nice segue uh, into another fun and interesting arena. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the slide up and then I'll, I'll kind of show you. Uh, what I'm talking about here. This is what you call a typewriter. And for folks who may not know what this antiquated, just, you know, dinosaur of a device is all about, you type wordy words <laughs> on the typewriter. I took the bar exam on a typewriter. Oh, did you? I did. Did you? I could type faster than I could write, and so I did. Well, the, the, the funny thing about this typewriter is that it is um, really kind of a high point in the technology of uh, typewriters. And, you know, I'll just kind of put this out there just as a uh, generic Typewriters for me, I was a part of that last peer group uh, that actually did typing in school. J, and J, 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 yeah, exactly. K, K, K. Did typewriting in school <laughs> on actual typewriters. Now, at least I, I well, did at you least. have the Selectric? No, we had electric typewriters, which was probably a oh, Selectric. Yeah, but it had like a little wheel on it that would spin around, and and it was kind of like a. Did you have the corrector tape one? Where you would you no, tell, I, we had to actually put go... little correction tape in, hit backspace and whack it, and hit backspace and whack it. Uh, but needless to say, I actually learned how to type on a typewriter, and it was just you know a couple grades afterwards that it was all strictly computers from then on out. So why typewriters? Well, you can look at it from a lot of different uh, directions. A lot of people just have these just because they're hand-me-downs that have been in the family, they've been put on a shelf otherwise forgotten. Uh, they are something you'll find at um, uh, yard sales, mm -hmm. uh, uh, used uh, um, you know, goods place, antiques uh, shops. You know, they are out there. What I don't think people realize is that they have on kind of an underground level become quite a commodity where people are spending like good money on these old vintage typewriters when they're in good shape um, and when they're in great shape they are little gems that you can cash in on uh, put them up on eBay put them on Etsy and there's a market for them all over the country we're in kind of an interesting region and for a lot of folks that live in rural communities, we may not always be up on the latest trend that's going on in more urban centers. Um, typewriters are kind of a thing. They're uh, perceived as kind of a hip, cool little uh, feature. For, for us, they were actually practical <laughs> tools of life. Uh, but the point is, is that they are making a comeback. Uh, and so I wanted to take a little time to talk about them only because, again, you probably have one of these and uh, or a family member may. And it's more likely collecting dust and hopefully, and this is a sad thing to think about, not rusting away or being thrown out from neglect the, or just yeah. being hucked uh, as some sort of throwaway yeah. that, that nobody would care about. Nobody's interested. Computers, computers, computers. Uh, I look at typewriters at least personally from a secondary standpoint, I have terrible penmanship. Horrible, in fact. <laughs> and uh, if the power goes out and the uh, world takes a pivot, I still need to be able to communicate. And I can use my fingers and typey type. 
Wordy words. Wordy words. <laughs> and you can understand what I'm saying. Uh, that is actually a very powerful tool, something that I value and treasure, treasure and will ensure is always a resource to me because I'm somebody that uh, makes a living with wordy words. And so I, I care. <laughs> I care deeply yeah, that what people know what they are. a t-shirt that says wordy words. <laughs> but regardless, I um, myself took a, an additional step. So not only appreciating typewriters, I actually took the additional step of acquiring one and learning how to fix the thing. To repair it. Repair it. Uh, re- service it restore so that them. it's uh, useful and at the end of the day, restore it. Um, I pulled up that, that Olivetti and I'll jump back to it. I researched, okay, what's the, the best, most effective, most mature technology that is out there when it comes to typewriters. Because remember, these things have been around, you know, 150 years-ish at this point. Maybe just shy of that um, as, as kind of like a mature, actually used regularly uh, tool. Uh, and so I started looking at kind of the 60s, early 70s before you started to see the pivot towards uh, electric typewriters. And found that uh, this was perceived, this is an Olivetti Latera 32. This was seen as kind of like a really mature version of mechanical typewriter. Uh, so it's not electric. This is not electric. This is, and let me, let me uh, come back over here and I'll go to the... Uh, um, that one's pretty. Put that one up. No, we'll get to that one. Oh, there's a pretty one coming. Yeah. <laughs> this... And to give you a sense, and I, I think dimension is nice. This is my first Olivetti that I actually personally restored. I've restored these now and sold them um, and made back any investment I've ever made in typewriters. So what you encounter, and mind you, this is something, this one's nice. It's got a little heft to it as far as the overall weight, but this one was designed to be carried. And when you open these things, um, you can remove them from their case and pull out the typewriter. Mm-hmm. And let me just kind of show you here. I'll take the case. Yeah. Okay. This is a little gem <laughs> of a device. Now, it may not for people that that don't appreciate what you know this means. You can type fast on these things. For a mature mechanical typewriter, if you're a modern typer who likes to type, you know, 35, 50 words a minute, um, you can do that on this. Uh, The ability to, uh, you know, and this is a a little tidbit here. You can get these in in Pica, which is kind of the, the standard traditional typewriter font. You can also get them, and this is why I love this one so much, in script, which basically types a version of cursive. So no millennials can read what you're writing or what you're typing. Oh, it's secret. (laughs) I didn't even think about that. I can type in cursive and no one younger than, what, 35 will know what it means. Which, side note, they don't teach cursive anymore, which is a tragedy. Uh, Regardless... The reason why, though, I like the Olivetti Latera 32 is because when you get it in script, the keys basically mirror the same kind of position that you would expect keys to be in on a modern computer. QWERTY. Isn't that what they call it? Well, it is QWERTY. That's the layout. But I mean like the the number one with the asterisks above it, Mm. the number four with the dollar sign above it. Uh, The script version, there are just some kind of unique features Uh, to it that actually makes it different slightly and just enough from a modern uh, keyboard uh, on a laptop, for example, that it just doesn't have the appeal. But this thing just belts out. These little keys whip around, whip around very quickly and allow you the opportunity to type in a manner that's very much comparable to what you might be used to on a modern keyboard. Now, there's some other cool things, not only just the fact that the manner in which it types... (laughs) When you get about, um, you know, collecting these things 
or you want to take the next step to restore them. There are a few components on typewriters, but very few that need to, to really be um, uh, replaced ever. As the, the steel on these things, the Olivetti, this is a, an actual uh, Italian company um, that, that put this out and they had factories in Spain and Italy, uh, but you know, sold internationally. Uh, I think this one's of Spanish origin or maybe, no, this one, this one is Italian, uh, okay. but you can get some of them in Spain as well. But they have like a little pop-off thing here and it exposes where the ribbon is. Now, is the, the ribbon's red? Does it type it's, in red? It's red or black depending on... Um, what you shift? Yeah, wh Especially which key you're hitting. I'd actually have to set this down to get that reset. But the main point is, is that when you're dealing with these things, you have the um, actual uh, platen which is what these keys are actually striking onto. Uh, and that's the, what, what, you know, you might just call the, the roller that you, you know, have when you're putting a piece of paper in. This can get hard. Or actually, I should it's, say it's it can. It, it does get hard it's over rubber, time. It? It's a rubber. Yeah, it hardens. And when it hardens, think about it. You've got these little keys with these little... Um, you know, raised, letters. raised, you know, metal uh, letters and numbers on them. Imagine taking metal and striking it on a very hard object over time. It dulls the actual metal, uh, metal on it and it, it loses its definition. Well, you can replace this rubber. Uh, there's a, a great, great outfit. They're actually out of uh, New York. Uh, JJ Short. Dot com. It's JJ Short Associates. They started in 1977, but they do specialized uh, rubber uh, type products for all types of industry. But one of the cool things they do, they will service and take care of putting new rubber on your original platens. Mm -hmm. So you take something that's already well built. This one's from the, the 60s. Um, you add new rubber to it. I was blessed because the feet on this one are good, still pliable rubber uh, feet so that, you know, it, it doesn't scratch up your tables or any surface you're on. It doesn't slide around when you're using it. Um, but by putting that new platen on, this thing's good for another 50 years of regular use without issue, without concern. Where do you get the ribbons from at this point in time? The ribbons, you you can just buy ribbon and spool it on to What's the there? originals uh, and just kind of you know Is cycle that it in that eBay way. purchase or an Amazon purchase? You can get it off purchase? of eBay, you can get it off of Amazon. They still make uh, the ribbon because there's a lot of people that actually in fact do uh, still care about uh, typewriters. Uh, so you can replace the ribbon if it gets uh, just dried out and the ink dries on it. But that's just a consumable on any typewriter that you're using. But it's not something that just wears out overnight. cool thing about typewriters, the ribbon goes this way and winds this way. And when it's done winding that way, it winds the other direction. Uh, so it's kind of slick little uh, technology. But this one, I know I got a hold of one. Uh, and I like the script one, so I kind of zeroed in on that. I think my first of these that I ever picked up, I paid like 65 bucks for on eBay. I got a new platen serviced. I think it was like 80 bucks uh, from the folks at jjshort.com, uh, uh, JJ Short Associates. They took care of that. I reinstalled it. Um, the little string that, you know, every time you hit the type or the keys on the typewriter, it kind of moves one uh, pike at a time. Uh, that can wear out sometimes. So you've got a string that maybe wears out, the rubber that maybe wears out, uh, and, uh, you know, rubber feet that might wear out, and ribbon, which you're going to need to be conscientious of anyways if you're regularly typing. That's it. Everything else is resilient. Um, these aren't products that rust out because, you know, the manufacturing at the time was of such high grade and high quality and the pride that went into, you know, manufacturing historically ensured that you have something that isn't rusting out on you and getting miserable with just 
a modicum of basic care. You know, you don't leave it out in the rain and, you know, anything that you care about, if you treat it right, it should be fine. And it's that's got how... It's a nice little carrying case, too. It's got its it cool little carrying it. uh, case. But by taking the, the time to do that and uh, fix one of these up, I think... What did I sell? I... I ended up selling one to someone, I think, in San Francisco. I, I got like, I don't know, close to $500 selling the thing to someone after just the most basic of, you know, clean it, uh, make sure there's no rust on it, make sure that there's no kind of accumulation of uh, uh, any um, dust or hair or, you know, shavings from somebody trying to erase or do anything of that nature. Uh, so they're out there and people are deeply interested in uh, buying these things. So now you sold it to somebody in San Francisco. Now didn't you see a movie where you kind of wondered yeah. if that was your Yeah, what there? was the movie that I was watching? There was some movie. I sold the thing and then I saw like literally a few months later a movie and what was in the movie was something that looked literally exactly the like the Lethera one. 32 that I just <laughs> like, sold. Is that mine? <laughs> yeah, I paused and I was looking at it. I'm like, that's obviously an Olivetti. Uh, it's obviously a Lethera 32 because they have a distinct look to them. <laughs> Maybe? Yeah. But this Who is knows? not his only baby. This he's, is not. I do have others. several. several. I have several and, and I tend to them and care for them and restore them. Uh, but... Uh, moving on, just to kind of give you a sense, this is uh, my latest uh, uh, acquisition, so to speak. And this is just a, a, an example of it. Um, I'll actually have pictures of, of mine, but this is a Corona. Uh, this is actually a Corona number four. These started coming out in the late 1920s. And they are, this That's one's a beautiful. museum piece. That's this a one's a museum typewriter. piece that uh, somebody, uh, I think actually Corona Company donated, I think this one to the Smithsonian, uh, because these are, are, are just classic, beautiful you know, part of American history. True. Um, but regardless, uh, the one that I just acquired, and I'll go over yeah. this one in detail, is now uh, at our law office. And uh, I'll get into some of the details of what I had to, to do with this one. This one has um, actually uh, a, just like a burgundy. Yeah, is that fair to say? Beautiful. It's this stunning burgundy. Um, Looks I like did send. Fan, fancy law office stuff. Yes, very <laughs> much so. Uh, but the cool thing is, is that this one. Um, I found it, uh, somebody had done a basic servicing, meaning just made sure the dust and, and hair and stuff like that wasn't uh, in it. But when I started looking at it, I realized there was zero rust on it. And mind you, this one is a 1931 Corona number four. So literally this is a 90 year old uh, typewriter. One thing, and I, I keep talking about uh, these typewriters and a great way for you to get more information if you have one yourself or you just pull it on the shelf uh, or have it on some shelf in a closet or in the basement, you want to pull it out, you can go to typewriterdatabase.com. So typewriter spelled out, database uh, spelled out, D-A-T-A-B-A-S-E, uh, but it's typewriterdatabase, all one word, dot com. Look at the serial number for your specific model of typewriter. Where do you find the serial numbers generally? It depends on the, the, the model. Okay. Uh, it you know, bottom, can be on the inside. bottom side. It can be on uh, kind of a inside, but like a, an interior mark on, a, on the frame or the subframe, depending on what um, kind of typewriter you have. So you hunt it up. Uh, and you can actually type that in. And if they don't have the exact year that that specific model number was uh, manufactured, they'll have the year range based on kind of model number series. You know, uh, you know and it could be numbers, uh, series of uh, letters, but they can actually give you a range that certain, uh, um, actually not certain, but most any typewriter was manufactured. And I think they even do cover uh, some of the various European brands. Germans were very big on uh, making typewriters. Obviously, the Italians uh, were very big on it. Um, I think some other Europeans, obviously English had theirs, but you can get information about all of them as well as a lot of your, your big American brands, which Corona, uh, 
uh, was. That's an American brand? Yeah, Corona was. Oh, one thing, and I don't want to uh, forget this. Olivetti, um, they purchased, I think it was in 1959, they purchased Underwood, uh, which is another uh, American, uh, if I'm not correct, uh, typewriter manufacturer. So sometimes you'll hear uh, uh, an Olivetti Underwood or you'll hear an Underwood referenced even though it looks exactly like an Olivetti. So if you hear Underwood or Olivetti, you may be dealing with the same exact typewriter, but just depending on where they were in their acquisition or, or their, um, you know, I guess management of that brand uh, may dictate what it is that you uh, see yours labeled as. But those are, are the same kind of technology, the same benefit, the same kind of utility that makes, at least for me, this uh, such an appealing uh, typewriter. Now, kind of going back uh, briefly to the uh, Corona, let me pull that back, back up. up. Um, there, in this one, just to point out some things. The lead paint that was used in this is absolutely stunning. So don't chew on it. <laughs> uh, it's not good for you. It looks beautiful and there's that. a reason. Uh. <laughs> uh, but that lead paint, they don't use it anymore. But when you see an old device like this, you can see why so many things were painted in that toxic but... Such beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, paint that uh, is associated with a lot of devices uh, like this. This is just another angle on the... Um, that's just um, elegant. I mean, that's it just completely elegant in how it was designed and crafted. It, it is. Now, this one is fully functional. Every key works. It types beautifully. Now... Because we're talking about, you know, something that came out in the um, late 20s, this, this ran, the number fours that ran in, in the 20s and 30s, uh, it's a deeper type experience on the fingers than what you might necessarily uh, experience on like a modern keyboard where it's oh, very sure. shallow or even the Latera, which is very quick. Just it's, you know, it's very fast. The, the modern mature typewriters vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the more, uh, in, in, you know, antique, if you will. These you had to press and, and commit a little bit more deeply to each key, but these things were built to last. Um, and the nice part is, is that this one has zero rust on it. Um, I did the same thing, went to the, uh, talked to the guys at jjshort.com because, uh, this one, I wanted the platen, which is the, the main roller replaced, but also when you pull apart a Corona number no. four like this, there are some rollers that you can't see until you've actually dismantled the unit slightly. They were able to replace those um, rollers just as well. And so all new rollers, all new platen. And on this one, it was very funny because I finished everything up and I was like, this is great. Type, 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 stopped moving. And I was like, oh. So it took me just a brief moment. I realized that the drawstring, because it's, it's like a mechanical spring, and the string is then every time you hit, you know, space or you hit a number key or a letter key, it clicks, 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 clicks. And then you, you're, if you've ever watched a movie or something, right. when it moves so far over, it dings. And then you've got this little uh, lever and you can see it in this one. It's kind of the shiny little hook thing on the, call it the return bar. Yeah, the return bar, you know, in the Olivetti uh you know, it's a little different shape. This one's a little little cleaner and tighter. But this little bar, you just hit it and slide it, and it, you know, carries over the um, uh, entire platen. But it also then one click so that your next line is set up for your next uh, paragraph or sentence of typing. Uh, and this one, the Olivetti, you can actually select how much of a space you want, how tight you want everything, or if you want to maybe Double be a little space, easier. Yeah, so you can actually select that, but they did a very nice job and it's very clean on the Olivetti. Very slick, very nice and fluid. So what and happened fluid. with that one? You were saying huh? about the string and yeah. it stopping? Yeah, so I'm busy 
clapping away, typing, and uh, it stops. I look at it, and um, the spring on the underside of it had uh, broken. And is this when you were in the kitchen? That one this day is when I was in the kitchen, and I think I used expletives only <laughs> seven times in repairing it. <laughs> Which I don't think is bad. <laughs> My son and uh, I just vacated the kitchen. Because <laughs> I, I, it was just one of those things where it's like, it's going to happen right now. The repair is going to happen right now. But thankfully, I have a, a friend in the uh, community who has a, a similar uh, issue, if you will, with uh, typewriters. <laughs> He's the one who got uh, you into these, did not it? No, no, I got them course. myself. And you just happened. And to have then a it was kind of like, "Hey, thing. I'm into this," and he was like, "Whoa, I am too." <laughs> and the rest is history, as far as uh, you know, a couple typewriter geeks go. Uh, but needless to say, he had some string for me, and I was able to get it in. It was definitely a little bit of a chore on the Olivetti. A little more straightforward. That, it was a little labor of love to, to make that uh, work. Um, but once it was done, it'll be good now for the next 90 years. Uh, that's the amazing thing about this. A very little uh, bit of effort and a little bit of conscientiousness. And I think the most important thing, knowing about J.J. Short Associates and knowing that you can send that rubber off, have it completely uh, reconditioned and put back on to your typewriter, knowing that now you, you have something that, you know, but for a few uh, nicks of its uh, stunning lead paint, uh, you would never know. <laughs> you would never, ever know uh, that this uh, beauty was uh, not fresh. Uh, from uh, the factory or otherwise. Oh, that's such a pretty picture. Yeah. Now this one, just kind of, you can zoom in and see. Now, mind you, this is 90-year-old steel, and it's it's flawless. You know, and even the little dimples in it just add character and charm. Uh, I don't care who you are. You're going to walk up and look at these things and yeah. just inspect the detail on it. I, and I also got a picture of the underside of it. Oh, wow. um, the cool thing, and now you can see at the top of the picture, there's a little marking on the, the paint. These actually come with a uh, handheld case comparable to what the Olivetti has. The problem is, is that a lot of the cases are 90 years old and they were used. Uh, these were... Um, uh, you know, sought after typewriters. They were popular typewriters. Uh, this company, Corona, uh, or at the time this one was manufactured, Corona was based in, uh, I guess it's Groton, no, uh, Groton, New York is where they were manufacturing these. Uh, and they had great deal of success with their first Corona. And they just then became the type, uh, Corona typewriter company. Shortly uh, thereafter, they merged with the L.C. Smith uh, company and then you would see a lot of uh, Smith and Corona mm -hmm. typewriters and a lot of people are probably familiar hearing uh, about Smith and Corona typewriters uh, but this is just kind of the early days of the merger and uh, these uh, typewriters but you can look at the underside of this zero rust uh, and you can barely make it out I should have probably taken an additional picture of the springs on the bottom side Every one of them, impeccable, flawless, beautiful. So I, I bring this up. And, and this one, one last thing before I get to my next point. The feet on this, the original rubber had just like flattened. So I found somebody and they're actually a Virginian who um, used 3D printing oh. and used modern synthetic uh, rubber material uh, to manufacture feet just for the Corona 4. What part of Virginia? Do you uh, I think they were Eastern Shore. Hmm. Uh, or no, were they Northern Virginia? I could go back and check. But regardless, you go onto eBay. You can hunt them up. Corona 4 uh, feet or rubber or what have you, and they're on there. Uh, so very nominal expense. Um, brand new feet all the way around. And because it's modern uh, kind of rubberized uh, material, that's impervious. It, it doesn't have the same properties that uh, natural uh, rubber may very well. And so it's not going to compress over time. So this will actually age better uh, than the original rubber that was used on it. And so, you know, I have what between the rubber and uh, um, getting the platen and, uh, you know, it only took a week for the folks at JJ Short to go ahead and turn around this uh, uh, rubber. Uh, so they were very, very quick. 
uh, I think for less than 150 bucks. I had the whole thing serviced up and ready. And it is it is stunning in our office. I don't care who comes into the office. They're going to take a minute to look at the typewriter because it's, it's that appealing, that gorgeous. This one, I probably won't ever bother hunting up a case for it uh, because while it is fully functional... Um, who would ever hide it? Yeah. Yeah, you want to see it. You want it out there. You want it to be a conversation piece. Um, but back to my main point. Got the new feed on. You can look at the underside of a typewriter. If you see that there's very little rust and that the springs are all on it and that the keys otherwise work, that's a great sign. If you see that the platen, you know, maybe take a fingernail and if, it, if it's real, you know, stiff and it's not pliable at all, you know, jjshort.com, you can get that replaced. Uh, ribbon, dirt cheap. You can easily, if you've got just some basic, basic mechanical sense, you can open the thing up and look and figure out how to thread in and feed in new uh, ribbon. You have something that, depending, could actually turn into a few hundred dollars of value for something that may have been a borderline throwaway for you. Yeah. Let alone, and, and mind you, if... You have uh, maybe somebody in your family who was a well-known writer, um, somebody that had any modicum of success or fame in life, kind of like the books. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like finding books before. that have interesting history as to who the prior owners were, you know, interesting history about the authors. Was this one in a, in a wartime office somewhere? Sure. I mean, uh, well, I actually have one that I'm servicing for my daughter that is an old U.S. government, literally wow. etched on the bottom. I think, I don't know if it was Department of Commerce or I don't know. It's, it's literally scratched into the bottom. <laughs> Like somebody etched it in, U.S. government. And I've, I'm working on that for our oldest daughter, which I'll get to it. But I bought a second one so I could, you know, cannibalize it to, to give her this nice one. But it's one of those big it desktop. It is. It's a it, You wouldn't want it to drop on you. It would murder you. Uh, but the point is, is that it's it's just got its own charm to it. Uh, so, you know, you have potentially a gem and like i said if somebody in your family has an interesting history to them um it's amazing once people find out that there's a great story behind these things they're willing to pay premiums and i i see some of these typewriters where starting bid for something that you know is just a nice typewriter all of a sudden there's a 500 hundred dollar premium on it just because it was an interesting person who typed on it yeah let alone you know famous authors um you know, think about the 20th century. All of our famous author, uh, authors of the 20th century, by and large, were using typewriters. Yeah. Um, you know, let alone, I guess, maybe the late 20th century. But by and large, everybody was using typewriters. Those are hitting auctions. And <laughs> you're talking a million dollars just because Whoa. somebody had a wrote a writer's... Special book, book yeah. You know, that was the book they, you know, clapped out, you know, Catcher in the Rye. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff that, you know, clearly isn't um, for everybody. And, you know, there are connoisseurs and people with more money than sense sometimes who, you know, have resources <laughs> to kind of just buy whatever. Doesn't mean, though, that something you may have isn't valuable, isn't interesting. And as somebody that doesn't have uh, any typewriter from some famous somebody, they're still wicked cool. Yeah. Uh, very fun and something that when you breathe life back into them, you know, for our peer group, it, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, typewriters. Gen X. Yeah, I'm Gen X. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Both you're, are. I'm yeah. one end or the other. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but for people who are, you know, 35 or younger, this is, you know, something they see on TV. This is something they watch in movies. It's not a practical experience for them. You sit somebody down on a typewriter, have them actually go through it. As somebody that types all day, just byproduct of my work, typing on a typewriter, because you don't want to make mistakes, because it's not like, you know, backspace, backspace, backspace on a computer and there's Control no X. consequence. <laughs> Control Z. Control Z. Um, you have to be more conscientious in the formation of your words and the manner in which you're typing. And it almost becomes like this little mini meditation to just focus in a way. 
Mm. I type and I'm a very distracted because uh, I'm thinking, doing stuff and just belting things out on a computer. On a typewriter, you're, you're kind of meditating over it to ensure that as you're thinking, as you're writing out a sentence, as you're typing it, it's just this, I don't know, very kind of methodical. Yeah. And, and the only you put yourself it's into a that contemplative zone, that zone where space that you comes. get into. And when you think about all the distractions in the world, I would just bet anybody, get behind a typewriter, type a letter, type a phrase, type your thoughts of the day, type a little journal for the day. And tell me you're not in a different headspace than you would have been at any other time of the day for just calming yourself, thinking about your words, being conscientious as you physically go through the act of typing them out, knowing that you want them to be just so. Uh, it's interesting. And, you know, somebody that's a thinker, uh, to think differently, to organize your life and how you conduct yourself in a way that's outside your norms, it expands your perspective on things that I, I think is healthy. It's healthy to get outside your usual comfort. And here's just a, a great convenient way that's practical, constructive, potentially valuable, easy, but is now this kind of like throwaway piece of history that people are rediscovering. Uh, much the same my sentiment about books, typewriters I think are one of those kind of bubbling below the surface uh, arenas of life that, uh, you know, wait another 10, 15 years to where it's really an anachronism. And people are just like, wait, there were days when you just sat and relaxed and thought, <laughs> really? You just, I call it my space out time. I, do people space out anymore? None of uh, that. No, th this is not space out time. This <laughs> is feeding some sort of opiate addiction <laughs> or was it? No, what, not dopamine. Dopamine. dopamine addiction oh like oh like <laughs> yeah literally opioids as we sit here and broadcast on exactly yeah. that yeah, forum yeah, yeah. Do it, do it, do it. hey guys subscribers <laughs> <laughs> but regardless it's just one of those things that i think is worthwhile go check out your typewriter give it another look see if you have any questions if you uh literally if you had a question for me and we're like Hey, I've got this. It's doing this. I now have gotten deep enough that I could say, well, check this out, check that out uh, and offer some constructive advice because uh, I think it'd be worth it to you to get that exposure. And I'll tell you, you work on one uh, typewriter, learn the basics of it. You're going to want to work on the next because you're like, wait, that's it. And where's my next one? Um, fun gifts, uh, giving people a typewriter now. It may end up on a shelf again. <laughs> But it's now their shelf and they have an awareness for it that but for you taking the time, they never would have been exposed to. Who would have thought my 17-year-old daughter's eagerly oh awaiting for her typewriter? Truly. Yeah, literally. Truly. Uh, so it, it's one picture. of those things. Send us a picture. You find one in your home that you yeah. haven't paid attention to and it's there. Send a picture or post a picture on the links. And I will be honest, even if I see some gem that you may not fully recognize, I'll tell you tell you, you have you a gem. have a gem. Take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> So, either way, um, worth checking out. Oh, I did not want to forget this. Remember correction tape? Mm-hmm. The little, well, there's correction tape now where you... No, 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 no. Typewriter correction yeah, tape. Yeah, those Selectrics had them. Yeah, but that was embedded in the system and most of the electronic units are shot out. Do you remember the old typewriter correction tape? can't say that I do. Yeah, it is literally a tape. One side of it had, um, it, or more of a film. One side of it had kind of like uh, just this white. Oh, and you would type and it would lift the letter right back off the paper. Either lift it or it would actually cover it, but directly in line with the impression uh -huh. of that respective key that you were striking on. So if it was a one and you, you meant it to be a two... You'd hit backspace and type your one again. Okay. And it would ink over just the exact outline. So it was actually kind of a very discreet form of correcting your typing. All right. What about it? Go try to find some. Really? Gone? Nobody's making it? Nobody's making it. Wow. Gone, gone, gone to the world. Ugh. I literally... I, I, I was like, okay, if I, money's no object. If I just don't care, what, what's it going to cost? <laughs> Even then it didn't matter. Really? Because the stuff that you're getting is literally like, you know, 
40 years old, which it probably renders, doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's worthless. It's worthless. It doesn't work. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, if you need to correct, obviously we have, uh, what's the, like the... Just white out. The correction tape. Like they now have like white out correction tapes. I think it would still be better to do the little bottle with the little sponge thing because it's much more delicate than that tape. Well, that tape is just, you know, there's a line and it's got little edges and... Sure, sure. So the either the tape or you're actually for. resorting back to white out. Yeah. But the dilemma is, is then you have to blow on it and wait a moment. And if you're, you know, but you're typing away... But you're anyways. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's part of the patience, <laughs> the meditation that only a typewriter can give. Uh, either way, either way. Just an interesting perspective out there that I think is worth checking out. Uh, don't write off your typewriters. Don't write off your old books. My my two little sentiments that I, I hope some folks uh, internalize. There are others. <laughs> no, there there are others, but it's a it's a dying breed. Yeah. There are, look at what's happening to book dealers. The real driving growth is for these kinds of books that have histories behind them mm -hmm. and stories. So it's not exactly the text per se. Mm -hmm. It's the story behind it. Uh, I think typewriters are going to be uh, on track, though, for their own revival uh, before long. And so better to pay attention now. Uh, keep track if you're out, uh, you know, shopping around and you're in some, you know, used, uh, uh, you know, what just... Knickknack, knick antique store, store, junk store. Yeah, and you see one, pick pick. check and see if there's, inspect it for rust, uh, inspect that it, each of the keys work, and make an offer, because it's probably been sitting there for a bit, and I bet you could probably get it on the cheap. Uh, there are YouTube videos uh, by other uh, uh, content creators who can walk you through um, how to do kind of interesting repairs that are sometimes necessary on a specific unit. So there's plenty of resources, even though you're talking about typewriters, because there are people who, who are interested in this. Worthwhile, in my opinion. And you know how much that's worth. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're here. I presume it matters some. No, but you know what I mean. It's one of those things that, you know, you, you hear about opinions. And, and there's all these really graphic ways to describe. Armpits. Yeah, how everyone <laughs> has one. So I'm not uh, one to think that it's also valuable and important. But also at the same time, if somebody takes the time to learn a few things, it makes it easier to, to know, hey, somebody else has walked down this path before me. They've given it some real thought. Uh, maybe I'll check it out. Yeah, I think well as much love as you've shown, you know, today and and always for these things. Is it a love? It is I love. I kind of do. It is care. Aww. I love my <laughs> typewriter. No, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, regardless, uh, I think that's it for this evening. That's it. That's it. Are tonight. we good? We're good. We're Show good. eight in the bag.